All right, so we're going to link up with some friends, Will and Joe, and run somewhere between 6 and 10 miles. Just some easy zone 2 miles to start the Saturday. Um, I slept in a little bit, so I'm running behind. I think Will's already at the park. He started. So I'm going to go catch up with him. Could be 6 miles, could be 8 miles, could be 10. I don't know. We're going to figure it out. And then probably finish off the run with a walk with his family. So welcome back to the fifth vlog. I'm glad you're here. And let's go have a Saturday. Just a little snippet. All right, the run is done. I did seven miles right between six and 10. And I forgot to film it, but I had a meal prep from Nutrition Solutions, naturally. It was uh, grass-fed beef with beef liver, potatoes, and peas. It's called their Chop House Grass-Fed Beef. So that was really good. I put a little bit of barbecue sauce on top of it. Absolute hitter. And then I'm probably going to have an apple pie protein bar and a little bit of milk because that sounds delicious right now. So we're already at seven miles on the day. We're going to take Bonehead here for a walk because he needs it. He just heard that and now he's looking at me and I've got to follow through quickly. And we will see you guys in the next clip. I don't talk about it much, but I do have a logo. I should show it more. This is the H for higher up. It's got a little arrow right here. I don't know if you can see it from all the way out. Uh, and then I have the full higher up, the word higher up, blue and black, just, I love it so much. Very simple, very minimalist, like me. I didn't like it, want anything flashy, and this just was perfect. My boy, Chris Maximum, uh, a friend from high school, designed it. He's a really talented graphic designer. And so yeah, I actually have, I have a couple of pieces of merch. I've got a pin, a coffee mug, a really cool Lululemon hoodie that my girlfriend's mom had made for me. I, uh, my girlfriend had this made and a couple of other things. And then her mom had the Lululemon hoodie made, as I may have just said, I can't remember the phone call, threw me off. But anyway, uh, I'm, it's 11 a.m. I haven't eaten yet, uh, but I have had a couple of cups of coffee. And then I have a mega, had a mega dose of lion's mane mushroom. Lion's mane is a nootropic, a brain boosting compound shown to potentially have neuroprotective properties, but when you mega dose it, it sort of has a buzz effect for a smooth like focus uh, that I really enjoy. And I've also noticed anecdotally and seen other people talk about this, because I'm in a cut, this is helpful, lion's mane in big doses seems to suppress my appetite. So I've been taking a mega dose in the morning to push off that first meal since we've started the cut. I also just like the way my brain feels when I take it. And this coffee also has lion's mane chaga and cordyceps. Both the lion's mane and this coffee are from, uh, excuse me, are from my friends at Revitalize Labs. A couple of buddies of mine trying to get their company off the ground and they make nootropic products. They're making an affordable self-cooling ice bath that I think is going to be a huge market disruptor. I'm excited to try it. And this is sustainably sourced organic coffee with nootropics and then their lion's mane as well. It's all third party tested. So really liking their supplements. Go check them out if you're into nootropics and want to give yourself that that buzz without taking something crazy like a study drug or anything like that. But yeah, gonna sip on this caffeine, finish the coffee, enjoy the nice weather. It's absolutely mint out today. And get some work done and then have my first meal around noon. It's 11 a.m. right now. We're already at 12,000 steps, which is sick. And probably gonna get 20K before the end of the day and train legs and make hitting that calorie deficit just effortless. We'll see you in the next clip. Okay, we could not wait to eat. I'm very hungry. I've been up for six hours already, so Gonna have a meal prep, nutrition solutions, taco meatballs, chicken meatballs, white rice, fajita vegetables, jalapenos, sofrito, cilantro. 478 cows, 44 protein, 34 carb, 16 fat. I'm gonna add half an avocado to this to up the fats a little bit. It's gonna slow the digestion down, which is going to keep me fuller for longer. And like I said, probably gonna be the only thing I eat before I train, so I wanna have a pretty calorically dense meal because I've already run and I probably don't have any glycogen or energy stored up anymore. So gonna crush this, excited, never had this one. And if you're interested in trying the meal prep, code HU to save 15% on your first order. All right, so I lied again. That was not gonna be the only thing I ate before I trained. I haven't done a two a day in a while and I'm not really in peak two a day training session shape. I used to lift and run AM, PM session quite a bit. But this is my first one in a long time and that run was six miles and it was fairly snappy for my current pace on the bulk. So I'm actually having a little bit more food. I'm having some overnight oats from Nutrition Solutions. This is 50 grams of carbs, 35 grams of protein, 38 actually, I think. So really solid. And it tastes good. I really, really enjoy it. Chocolate flavor is a little better in my opinion. This is apples and cinnamon, but they send them to you pre-made. Obviously you normally eat these cold. I heated them up and then I added a touch of honey and salt for some added electrolytes. I just, oh shit, I got oatmeal on my computer. All better. 
I just, uh, I just probably got so many bacteria into my mouth. Anyway, I just wanted a little more food and carbohydrates before this leg workout. I'm a little tired. I slept for like five and a half hours last night. And I just want a little extra boost. I'm also probably going to break my caffeine past noon rule and have some of this new pre-workout. Let me go get it and show you what it is. So I thought I wasn't a fan of this pre, and then they released a new flavor, and so I tried it. And I double scooped it, and I got, I felt a little scared and anxious and paranoid, and then I just felt insane focus and crazy pump. It's Project Mass from EchoVision. This is Blackberry Smash. This is Noah Mason's proprietary flavor, or proprietary formula. Proprietary signature formula. It's actually a banger of a pre-workout. It has a stimulant called Yohimbine in it. Yohimbine, Yohimbine. It kind of makes you feel funny and gives you like that weird anxiousness at first. And then it sort of settles into like extreme focus. I felt like once that wore off, it took like 15 minutes. I could have done like deep work on this stuff. And it's got 10 grams of L-citrulline. It has hydroprime glycerol and vasodrive AP. So the pump is crazy. Ideal on leg day, maybe not. But I'm going to do a single scoop of this because that's, what is that? 125 megs of normal caffeine and then 35 megs of extended release caffeine. So it's not a huge amount of caffeine. And then one milligram of Yohimbine for the single scoop. Really solid pre-workout. Very much like this. It's uh, a lot of fun. <laughs> I've been enjoying since being sponsored by Echo. I've been enjoying just experimenting with pre. They've got the Obi Mix, this, Optismal, TNF Outcast, Ryabolic, all kinds of pre-workouts. The Satori Non-Stem actually mixed Two scoops of this with one scoop of Satori and the pump was ridiculously absurd. And I looked crazy on upper body day. So I'm gonna crush a scoop of that. I'm gonna eat this and then take the dog for a quick walk to let it digest and get some of this glycogen in my system and then go train. Go get some sunlight, you heathens. All right, Sarah and I just wrapped up a two and a quarter mile walk. My steps are at like 17,000 and it's only two o'clock. So the activity is gonna be really high today, which is going to make achieving the calorie deficit really, really easy. I encourage people, coaching clients, anyone who asks, if you want to make the deficit easier, simply increase your activity level. It's a whole lot easier, in my opinion, than cutting food. I'd rather eat more and move more than eat less and move less. So if you're struggling, you're hitting 10,000 steps a day, training three to four times a week, hit 15,000 instead. If you can find the you know extra 30 minutes in the day. It was a huge difference maker for me when I started doing this, the fat just started melting off. All right, I did not do a voiceover at the gym because the music at this particular Crunch Fitness was absolutely banging, and I knew you wouldn't be able to hear me. So I'm going to voice over the workout here. Um, this was a lower body day. I believe I did a little bit of upper body work because I hadn't trained in a few days, and I wanted to get volume on everything. But we started off with two sets to failure, or close to failure, rather, of hack squat. I don't want to take this to pure failure without someone spotting on the other side because I really just don't feel like getting absolutely pinned because that would be embarrassing. Uh, but yeah, here's the last rep, pretty close to failure there, and that's the end of the set. Next, we moved into my first working set of deadlift, which I realized I grossly undercalculated. This was about RPE 5, and it was supposed to be two sets of five. Uh, so deadlifts right after squats was pretty challenging, but this still felt really, really light, which I was happy with. I'm not aggressively moving up in deadlift. I'm not trying to, but as long as I can maintain this strength, I'm happy with it. And naturally, because I'm such a genius, I thought, oh yeah, 320 was easy. Why not jump up 50 pounds? And tried to pull these first two reps hook grip, which I did. Uh, my grip did not give out. It simply hurt my hands too bad because I was using a deadlift bar. And the knurling, the grip on the deadlift bars is aggressive. I don't want to rip my thumb open. wasn't worth the pride. So I went and grabbed my Echo Vision lifting straps and just finished the set with the straps on. It's fine. I didn't love it. I prefer holding it without straps. I like the grip aspect a lot better, but this still wasn't that hard. I was happy with 365 for five. So the workout is done. Did a lower body session. Forgot to film leg extensions and calf raises. I was in a hurry. Had a coaching call, but I'm very hungry. I'm at 21,000 steps and a lower body day, and I've only had like 650 calories, 700 calories maybe. So this is a staple for me when I cut. This is just turkey and cheese roll up. Cheddar, not my favorite. I like good old American cheese with my lunch meat. Call me gross, call me basic, call me Caucasian, but you can't call me fat. <laughs> anyway, lunch meat, DC, maron. Pure protein and fat. The DC is just salty, sweet addition. This is an absolute staple snack for me when I'm cutting. It's enjoyable. I don't think it's bland. I've been eating these for years. Sometimes I'll get crazy and put a little avocado in it or maybe even a little mayo. <gasps> Seed oils. Don't care. Anyway, I'm gonna eat this and then gonna make something really fire for dinner tonight. Very excited. No microphone. Deal with it.
But anyway, made Sarah and I dinner, and I haven't cooked in a while because we've been eating only meal prep, and I'm excited to share this meal with you because it looks fire, and I'm very excited to eat it. So we've got air fried potatoes that I parboiled for four minutes and then seasoned up with, let me grab it, this Caribbecue stuff. Oh Jesus, this Caribbecue stuff here. It's very good. I met the owner at the butcher shop a couple weeks ago. He sent me some stuff. It's actually unbelievable. Anyway, air fried potatoes, parboiled. They come out way crispier when you parboil them. I don't know why I haven't always done this. And, drawer's broken. And Mexican street corn salad. So this is basically elote but I cut the corn off the cob after I grill it, hit it with cotija cheese, a little bit of a sauce that I make, and some paprika, and then some of that street corn sauce over some smoked chicken thighs. Healthy eating isn't boring, you just can't cook. <laughs> this is oddly vulnerable, filming this in my bed, even though I've made TikToks here. My energy expenditure was crazy high today. It's 10.30 at night, I'm very tired. Sarah made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And I'm gonna delete it. And you know what? It tastes fantastic. It's on Hawaiian sweet bread. Nothing health food about it. It's just a classic PB and J, and it absolutely rips. So I'm gonna eat this. I'm gonna watch some TV, and I'm gonna pass out because I've been up for a long time. Metro booming, want some more, nigga. And that past thing speaking through the city. Penny from the green. The fall off of little baby should be studied. It's really sad. We are on the way to the gym. It is Friday at 11 a.m. because I have a pretty, well, empty mid-morning and I decided to sleep in a little bit because it's Friday and I slept awful last night. And now we are on the way to do an upper body session. Today's training is a little bit different. I'm also sipping on a pre-workout concoction that I made that I'm a little bit scared of, just a little bit. Hopefully, I've corrected the whole audio in one ear issue. I'm trying a different setting on the mic because you guys swear that it's only playing out of one ear, but when I listen to it on all headphones, all the audio sources I have, it sounds full and complete and beautiful and wonderful. This will be my third training session of the week. I'm going to swap to a three-day split starting next week. As the title of the video states, the cut has begun. So no more thick smoke coming out of the woodworks here. We are getting lean again. I didn't really let myself get too thick on this bulk. I was actually pretty proud of how lean I stayed and how strong I got, but regardless, it's March and I'm probably gonna take eight to nine weeks to get really lean anyway because I know I'll have days where I go out and maybe consume alcohol or just eat too much. So I create a couple of week buffer to allow myself some extra time. Uh, but right now I didn't train the front half of the week, had some stuff going on that prevented me from getting into the gym. So we got in Wednesday and did a full upper body session. We did everything, chest, shoulders, triceps, back, biceps, all of it. And then yesterday did just squats, deadlifts, leg extensions and calf raises. And today we are gonna do another upper body session with maybe like three sets of squat. Maybe, I'm not really sure. The goal is just to get my weekly volume around eight sets for everything on my body. Um, obviously when you're cutting, you don't need nearly as much volume to maintain tissue as you would to maybe potentially grow it on a bulk. Really the research lends itself to, shout out Dr. Mike Israel for this, two hard sets to failure per week could probably preserve muscle tissue. Obviously I wanna to try to grow, in this deficit if I can. Is that likely as an eight-year trainee naturally? No, but I'm a train like I'm trying to grow because your training should never really change that much cutting or bulking. And when I say never really change, I mean how you train. Intensity, rep ranges, exercise selection. You don't do that high rep, low weight to cut, or excuse me, high rep, low weight to, yeah, to cut, to tone. Is that what the idiots say? It's so stupid I can't even remember it and low rep, high weight to cut, I don't know, you know what I mean. I'm bumbling through it like an idiot right now. I haven't caffeinated yet, but regardless, the people who say your rep ranges should change, ha, <laughs> that truck says clean me please in the dirt on the tailgate. The people who say your rep range should change based on cutting or bulking are idiots. They don't know what they're talking about. And I'm gonna train in the five to eight rep range close to or past failure, just like I always do, because it makes sense, common sense wise to say, Okay, well, if I want to gain muscle, I need to train in a way that takes it to failure, forces it to grow, and do that a few times. But if I'm cutting, I need to preserve, preserve muscle tissue, so I need to give the muscle a reason to stay so my body doesn't cat catabolize it during the cut. So I should probably train hard and train close to failure. It makes common sense when you think about it. Most people just don't critically think about their own fucking lives. 
that's a deeper, there's a deeper conversation there. Anyway, I'm sipping on one scoop of Project Mass from Echo Vision and one scoop of Back Shots. They're both really good pre-workouts. Um, so I did one scoop of each, just trying that to see how it feels. I know the pump's gonna go crazy. I also took a serving of pump caps. I really want to feel like my muscles are going to rip out of my skin. So code HU, if you wanna try some pre-workout or some dope Echo Vision clothing, which everything I'm wearing right now is Echo Vision. <laughs> I'm in Echo Vision sweats, Echo Vision hoodie, and an Echo Vision beater. So we're gonna head to the gym, be going to a different crunch down the road in the metro Atlanta area. This one's on in Marietta, a little bit ways away from my house, but far better. They've got hammer strength equipment, and I like this gym more. Seems more filming friendly too. But anyway, the beta alanine's starting to kick in, the yohimbine's starting to make me feel slightly paranoid. So that means it's time to get a sick pump. We'll see you at the gym. All right, and once again, we did not do a voiceover in the gym because it was very loud and very crowded, so we're going to do a voiceover now. Today was an upper body session. I always start my upper body sessions with a pull movement, so this is a just a great chest-supported row. I love the angle. I love the feel of this. I can really feel my back and rhomboids engaging. I also really like starting with a pull movement before I do a push movement because I feel if my lats are pumped and engaged and firing, I can get better scapular retraction and stability in my first pressing movement. So that's exactly why I always start with either a vertical or horizontal pull. So as you can see, I took this to failure. I think I try a partial here, and I did two sets just like this, as close to failure as I could possibly get. And then after this, we move into one of my new favorites, a recently newfound favorite, incline barbell bench. This was a five pound increase from last week. So I was happy with this. That guy next to me asked me to spot him on 405, and that was terrifying. But uh, I did it. We ended up chatting it up. Abel, you're the man. You're probably not watching this, but you're still the man. Either way, did two working sets of this as well, and then moved over to another pulling movement. Okay, my apologies. I lied. I actually remember now I rested for like 12 minutes talking to that Abel guy on the incline bench that was super strong, and the back machine I needed was occupied, so I just moved over to this. I'm really liking machine movements for my shoulder pressing lately. I love the stability of some of these movements uh, on a machine rather than with dumbbells or barbells. I just feel better engagement. So I did myo reps here. I did an initial set to failure, dropped the weight just a little bit, and did a couple of like cluster sets of four to six reps with 10 to 15 seconds of rest in between. This is a really good way to get in some high-intensity training and a decent amount of volume in a fairly short amount of time. And I remember I was pressed for time here. So this is just an effective way that I like to train when I've got maybe 45 minutes total in the gym. So as you can see here, I overshot my landing, dropped the weight a little bit more, and then I knock out another set. I don't love that this machine moves. I wish I could just keep my damn feet on the ground, but whatever. Beggars can't be choosers at the end of the day. It is crunch fitness. Definitely hit failure here and then moved on to the next movement. All right, per usual, I've done my horizontal pull and a couple of pushes, so now it's time for my vertical pull. I structure every upper body workout this way. I always do a couple of sets of a horizontal pull for thickness in the back and a vertical pull for width. So this is obviously a lat pull down. I just tried a new machine here. I'd never done it before and got relatively close to failure. And then I think I did one more set of this. And to finish out the upper body training session, an arm accessory. So all of my upper body sessions in the week look like this. Do my main pulls and pushes, and then either do a tricep or bicep accessory alternating. So my last session of upper body was a tricep accessory. Now we're hammering preacher curls. And these are myo reps, just like I talked about earlier with the shoulder press, an initial set to failure, drop the weight a little bit, I rest for 10 to 15 seconds, and then perform three to four subsequent sets of four to six reps, again close to failure. So I repeated this process with one initial failure set and three myo rep sets afterwards. Like I said, it's just an easy way to get in intensity and volume in a very short amount of time. I think this entire set of work of four sets took me like two and a half minutes. So 15 seconds rest, rinse and repeat that for three sets and you've got five sets of volume or four sets of volume to failure on your arms. Super effective way to train when you're pressed for time. Really, really happy with the hypertrophy it's elicited in my arms as well. I didn't realize how badly my arms were lagging until I started training them. So now that I'm getting leaner, I'm starting to see the work, and it's very gratifying. So for those of you out there scared to bulk, stop it. All right, workout's done. I filmed a little bit of it. I don't think I filmed quite all of it. I got tied up with a dude in the gym named Abel, badass name, who also happens to be built like a brick shit house. And I got nervous because he asked me to give him a lift off and a spot on incline bench, and he was incline benching 385 pounds. Uh, and I don't know if you know anything about me, and I may not be weak, 
but I sure as shit can't incline bench 385 pounds. So I was nervous, but he said I gave him a perfect lift and he did that shit for a single and then he did 405 for a single and then he did a drop set of 315 for like 10 on incline. So dude was a beast. He's a house flipper, super nice guy, very friendly. Um, and that's why I love the gym. You know, sometimes you ask someone for a spot and then you end up just having a sick conversation with them and building a cool connection. I've met a lot of friends that way. That's actually how I got the office space that I rent my podcast studio area from, the guy that owns that warehouse. I approached him in the gym because he was wearing a dope hat. Turns out he was the CEO of Carte Blanche, which is the hats that you see me wear in my videos that Seabum wears, Rick Ross wears their stuff. They make awesome clothes. And he's a super successful young guy named Louis Leidenfrost. And it's just cool how when you just put yourself out there and put yourself outside of your comfort zone, it rarely blows up in your face. Now, if you're talking to a girl or a guy in a bar and they shut you down, that's not necessarily what I'm talking about. Absolutely recommend you do that if that's your thing and that's what you need to do in life. Uh, but if you just walk up to somebody like, hey man, can you give me a spot in the gym? Or, hey man, that was really impressive. I, I do that all the time with people. Like, hey man, that was a sick lift. Like, that was crazy. Uh, you're mad strong. And then we just start talking and everyone's favorite subject is themselves and you open them up when you lead with a compliment like that. And I had a great conversation. We ended up talking for 20 minutes and my session ran for an hour and 20 minutes, which was far too, far too long for a normal workout, but it was totally worth it. So I encourage you, if you're trying to meet like-minded people, I know I have the community, the higher up lifestyle that I talk about, but you can just go to the places that you want to go and then just talk to people and you'll be amazed at the friends you can make and the connections that you can build. I've built a lot of cool friendships and relationships simply from walking up to a, a total stranger. Now, I'm a little bit calloused from my time in sales, cold calling people and getting told to fuck off by CEOs over the phone, but anyone can do this. It really is true, the cliche that growth happens on the other side of your comfort zone. There's a reason it's a cliche. It's because it works. It really is amazing. I, I've done a lot of things that are very uncomfortable in the last few months and they've changed my life. Hell, posting videos on the internet is still out of my comfort zone. And look where it got me. It's my full fucking time job now. So it's it's a blessing. It's amazing what can happen if you're just willing to push yourself a little bit and rarely will it backfire on you. So go talk to that homeboy in the gym. If you're looking for a new friend that, you know, he's strong and shit, he looks jacked, you need a training partner, maybe you'll get one if you just go say what's up. And it's uh, it's a lot of fun. I think this is a better way to live. So the workout is done. And my afternoon is absolutely jammed with calls starting at 2 p.m. So I need to get my ass back. Jesus, it's already 1.30. This is why I don't sleep in. It stresses me out. It makes me feel like the day is closing in on me. But regardless, I'm going to eat a meal prep as I so often do because I don't feel like cooking anything and I'm pressed for time. This is another reason that Nutrition Solutions is so freaking clutch for the life that I live. Code HU if you want to save 15% of your first... Ah! <laughs> Sorry. First Nutrition Solutions order. But... Gonna stop this footage now, get to the house, eat some Caribbean pineapple chicken tenders with plantains, and then get to work. So this might be the closing clip for the blog, the vlog. It might not, I don't know. If the video ends here and there's no more on YouTube, then you know that this is where I decided to end it, but maybe not, we'll see.